Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a 2002 Zenith model TV-BR1352Z. This is a 13-inch combination TV VCR. The logo you see on the front is the name of a small local band here in San Diego, and they use this as a prop on stage during concerts, and they run a loop of uh, video through it during the concert. And recently what happened was somebody damaged either the tack switch or the descenders for the switch here because these two buttons don't work anymore. These ones have a regular feel. This one's smashed in. This one's just stuck. So we're going to see if we can take this apart and resolve that issue and see if we can get this happily working again. So let's get it apart. And here it is apart with the back off. You can see that their tape is still in the machine. Uh, so we'll have to be aware of that. Now it's just a matter of undoing a couple things here, taking some screws loose on the board, and we should be able to take this out as an entire entity. So uh, let me see if I can get the camera mounted and we can figure that one out. So we've got a screw here on this side of the board, which looks like it's a stop. Undo these. Now this one's okay. This one here is still attached to the DAG on the CRT. Loosen this guy. And loosen this guy. May have to undo the yoke and stuff like that to get it to slide back. I haven't seen a TV VCR combo unit in probably the better part of 15 years. They really <clears throat> were not very popular. At least around here they weren't. Alright, disconnect our yoke and our degaussing. I'm going to discharge the CRT. Let me grab a lead here. And I thought about this at the wrong moment, so we're going to have to hook the ground back up because that's kind of crucial in discharging it. And I'm going to clip on to the DAG coating here, like this. And we're just going to slide this, clip it onto here, slide it under here. Just hold it for about 10 seconds. Probably doesn't even need to be that long. this up and let's see if I can get this loose here all right not quite loose yet I'm trying to figure out what else is still holding this in here take this loose again before I forget and rip it all off of the CRT that would be great and yeah, let's see let's look for any release clips or anything like that we got this here There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and take loose our CRT socket. And then there's the speaker. And our AC line cord. <clears throat> and then there's the ground for the CRT here. Okay. So I can get this all free. And then we have a little bit better look at what's going on inside of here. I think we do. Somebody's already repaired that. 
I can see that button's got uh, heat shrink around it. Okay. So what let's do is uh, release the little plastic pull the buttons. make this a little more visible it's a little better I like how it looks like there's two speakers in the front but there's really only one not the hi-fi model okay yeah, I may have to do this one too over here why not? And then we'll take a look and see what's broken. All right, so that's just a guide there. Yep, that one's jammed. Almost like it was dropped. Like a lot of these, if I press them from the front, they kind of stick. Like that one's okay. That one's okay. Then you have this thing here, which really wants to stick. It's hard to tell whether the plastic holding them in is broken or not. I don't know if they put that on there to make it work better or what, but the, the little flexible plastic is not broken. But these buttons sure do stick. The play one and the power button. The power button is really bad. So I think what I might do is I'm going to get a heat gun and apply a little bit of heat, not so much that I melt it, but enough that it gets soft and I can kind of push this down a little bit and free it up because right now it's just binding at the top here. Uh, same with this play button. And then we have to ask ourselves, why did they, why is these two messed up? I mean, I, I get it. They're the most frequently used, but... Did the tack switches wear out and they just started wailing on it? I mean, what happened here? Like this, this tape around here. Let me get a set of hemostats here. Like, I expect this to come apart when I take this off. But it doesn't. And somebody even took the time to put a little piece of, like, expanding foam or double-sided stick tape underneath there. So, clearly, there was an issue with the buttons. And I'm guessing that the tack switches are just simply wore out. So we'll have to check that. But first, I want to get this stuff free moving. So let me get the heat gun and we'll soften that plastic a little bit to get to move freely. Do the same for the play button and then we'll check the tack switches on the board. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit tricky. Because I have to regulate heat and I have to check and see what the uh, what the button's going to be acting like. So we're going to heat it up a little bit and then I'm probably going to have to get in the way of things and move the camera and the like. So, yep, be prepared for that. Shifting in things. Move that there. Alright. Here we go. Just a little bit of heat here. In fact, I'll add a little bit of weight to it by pressing down on it with a screwdriver. We'll get in here. And when I feel it move, I know we're starting to soften up. 
Yep, starting to soften up. Push down a little. There we go. All right, so it is soft. And I'm gonna, yep, just hold it in this position here. Nice and free moving. And that should be cool as it cools down. If you want to accelerate the cool, you can use uh, freeze mist, which I have kicking around here. This is like R152 or something. Chill it a bit. And verify that it still moves freely, and it does. So that's good. And just in case there isn't some sort of like gunk or anything on the top of this button, I'm gonna clean that off. Yeah, nice and free moving there. Okay, so let's focus on this guy here is also a little bit sticky and same thing we're just going to soften the plastic get it so that it moves and then hold it in a position where it's free as it cools down and then freeze it the buzzing you hear is just an artifact of kickback on the line and for some strange reason my uh, isolation transformer loves to buzz Getting a little soft there. All right, there we go. And we'll just hold that down there again. Nice and free moving. Let's go ahead and freeze it as is. Cool it down a bit. Still nice and free moving, as is the other one. So, <clears throat> we've done our work there, and now we can put the plate back in here, because I think this portion of the repair is good. Okay. Put our screws back in here and then we have to examine why somebody mashed the buttons in which is probably because the poor tack switches on the board have about died so we're going to look into that next i just need to get this clear of the bench so that i have room to look at the main board and let's see now I screw up here. Oh, there we go. Just needed to align it. Yep, still free moving here. Excellent. All right, let's get this off the bench and get the uh, board on the bench. All right, so here's our our main board here with our VHS, and so this is power. And let's see. That's stop eject. That's cue up, which I guess it's play. Volume up, volume down, channel down, record. Oh, here's play. This is actually play, and this is stop eject. Okay, so we're going to get the ESR meter and test the tack switches because it's a very good representation of uh, loss in the switch. And since the ESR meter puts a tiny, itty bitty little signal, uh, it'll easily allow me to see if there's loss in the switches. So, I don't know if it's going to be possible to hold all this and do it, but my goal is for you to see when I press on the power switch over here, the quality of the signal, because obviously if I short them together, we get a nice hard short there. You can see the meter fully deflect. 
And that's what we're looking for here. But I have a sinking suspicion that if I press the power button, well, we do get a good deflection there. And that's repeatable. Okay, so the power switch is good. Doesn't explain why somebody got that button stuck. So let's go over to the play switch, which is this guy here, and check him and see if he's okay. And he appears to be. And let's see, the one next to it, which is the queue up. Yep, you're pretty good. One next to it. All right, so in theory, all of these uh, tack switches are good. So I guess people were just rough with it. I do see that the video jacks here are about ready to break free, so I'm going to go ahead and resolder those as kind of a courtesy. It's always that front there, right where the highest point of flex is. But we'll just solder them down. And just for grins and giggles, I am going to solder the power switch and the play switch. Just because it's very likely the most used things on the set. So, because our switches check out and we now have freed up the... Uh, front panel plastics now we can put it all together and see if it actually works all right let's go ahead and reinstall the main board get everything draped up here so it's out of my way we'll hook up our speaker here All right Trying to find the spots where it's just going to click in and be real easy on me. So far it's not doing that. And I just missed it. Alright. That clicks in. And before we go too much further, let's listen for the click of our tack switches. On the front panel here. Yeah, something ain't right here. So something still doesn't feel right. So let's go ahead and pull this back out. And let's pull it out enough we can check here that one feels all right but something about that does not yeah so we obviously have some clearance issues which may have been created by yours truly because of the little descender moving downward. So let's go ahead and pull this out again. And there's obviously something afoot with the descenders. My guess is 
is that the clearances between, oh, well, that's interesting. Play button over here is sticking up. The stop button sticking up a lot more too. Uh, the power button is definitely not happy. That's the least happiest one. Although it is free moving. So what I am going to try to do which you probably can't see off camera, is I'm going to try to push the tack switches down further onto the board to change the height and elevation. So give me a moment to do that. All right, so what I did was is I pushed the buttons down more onto the board, and I also shaved off a little bit of the play and a little bit of the power button to see if they can't make better or lesser contact, I guess you could say. And we'll see how this fits in here. And if I can make this work, I will be a happy camper. Right, so that's pressed in there. Much better. I think we're good to go there. We'll find out in a moment. Hook everything back up. <clears throat> yep, got that locked in. And let's connect our important things here. Our CRT. yoke and then let's see what else here our AC our ground and then finally our high voltage pins here all right so here's the moment of truth we're going to see if it in fact does what it's supposed to all right so can we power on Well, I hear it doing something. All right, comes out okay. But I'm not getting any power on. I heard something come on. I feel high voltage. And our button fails. Yay! Yeah, so something's just not right here. We have to look at that in greater depth. Because our buttons are still unresponsive. Makes me wonder if I should run the chassis outside of the thing, huh? All right, so it looks like second time around, we did have a failure of the play button here, which the little plastic sliver at the bottom broke away. The power button uh, is still intact. I did do a little fusion on a crack that was visible down here, and it appears to be sticking up enough, but I don't really know. So we need to find a way to reattach this so it works a little better. And maybe put some reinforcements, like uh, little bits of metal or something, to hold it in place. I don't know. I'll figure something out. But that's why no button, no joy. Okay. So what I've done here is 
I fused some little bits of metal into the plastic on both sides to create kind of a, a hinge. So that's at least reattached. Uh, I'm going to try some thinner tack switches since we had clearance issues. And uh, replace the play and the power with different tack switches and see if that helps us a little bit. I hope it will. But we're at least on our way to working. All right, so we got smaller, lower profile tack switches in here and then for the power. So a little bit different. Let's see if that makes any uh, better efforts to getting this running. Well, this is promising at least. You can hear it go clicky. Let's see if it actually works. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Heard something go clicky. There's high voltage on the screen. Can't tell what it's doing. Like I'm hearing it energize. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we can do uh, play here. Yeah. That's a plus. All right, cool. So that's all working. Does it eject? Sure does. All right. Look at that cheap. Funai, whatever there. Well, I can see that the, gosh, the convergence is awful. Let me get a signal generator on this real quick and just take a look. Yeah, so that's like really bad. That's terrible. I wonder if this got bumped or something. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the convergence magnets are busted. That'll do it. Alright, well let's see if we can tweak this thing to where it kind of sort of works and then we'll... Uh... I'm going to need two hands for this one, then I'll glue it in place. Alright, well there it is. I've got the convergence dialed in about as good as it'll get. Uh, let's see here. That's decent. So... I made some little incisions there. You can see the little slits that I bonded them all together with a soldering iron to hold them in place. And now I will glue that assembly to the neck to the neck of the tube. And we should be good to go there. That'll at least make it so that they can use it without a, the picture looking so god awful. All right, she's all glued up there. Not going anywhere now. So this thing's good to go. Good convergence, decent picture. Uh, VCR and all that works. So I think we're gonna call this one done. And if I turn the signal generator off, we just go back to snow. Um, so yeah. So this was a bit of a challenge, but we were able to fix it, and I'm sure the band's going to be happy now that they have their prop back. So hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. They're not really big, but uh, I'll post a link in the description. You can go check them out. They're just a little tiny band here in San Diego that likes to play every once in a while. So give them a shout. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come.